counting equation and Excel. Enter billable time and create an invoice based on the billable time. Get ready and some coffee because we're learning the accounting foundation, the accounting equation using Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts. A must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six-pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, you know, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six-pack isn't spelled right. But three letters is more efficient than four, so I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. We are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there, or you can just construct your own worksheet as we go, or possibly just follow along with good old paper and pencil. If you do have access to this workbook, though, three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab, having pre-formatted cells, so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, is where we started with a blank worksheet but are basically continuing within a template now. However, we will be adding to that template as needed as we go practicing our formatting when we do. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing. Remember in a quick recap of what we have done, we're thinking about constructing our books with basically the accounting equation, the accounting equation acting as basically our trial balance from which we will construct our major financial statement reports, balance sheet income statement, income statement sometimes called the profit and loss report. We entered the first month of information starting with some of those startup costs we often have in the first month of operations or when the business is growing, such as the need for capital or cash, which might come from the owner or from a loan to get the money in the business so that we can buy the startup costs, investing in things like property, planting, equipment, and inventory so that we can then consume those in the pursuit of revenue. And then we looked at some transactions related to revenue generation, selling inventory. In our case, we're thinking we're a guitar shop. And then we had some uh, service items as well without inventory. So now we want to think about a situation where we have a timesheet scenario. And this will be similar to some like job cost kind of systems. This is a classical job cost system for service items. Might be like a law firm or a CPA firm. Where classically you usually have like a partnership and the partners are kind of sharing in essence the, the resources of the business including the staff of the business who then have to fill out timesheets to say who they worked on, whose clients did they work on, and so on and so forth. That information needs to be compiled in order to invoice the clients. And I always think about the classic example. Many people probably haven't seen uh, this movie these days because it's kind of old, but it was popular when it came out. It was called The Devil's Advocate, I think it was, where the lawyer was a hotshot lawyer, and uh, he, he didn't know it, but he was hired by, like, uh, the, the a law firm that always worked for like the mafia or something and the guy would tell him I don't care what you're doing I don't care if you're even thinking about a client make sure that you write it down make sure that you bill it because we need to bill the client right 
And so th that's the idea. So even if you're a salaried employee, certain types of structures, you need this billable system. You need to track the billable time so that you can, uh, you can charge based on uh, that billable time. Again, classic scenarios of that are law firm, CPA firm, but you can imagine many other kind of service based scenarios. What we're looking at then is basically kind of a job cost system, which is similar to what you might see in like a construction company. But in a construction company, you have other things that you're going to be applying to a particular job like resources and whatnot that you're purchasing for the job. So it's kind of like more of a simplified job cost system in essence for service type items. Okay, in our case, we're going to imagine that we have our employees that do guitar lessons. So they're going to do guitar lessons, and then they're going to tell us who they did the guitar lessons for, like in a law firm or a CPA firm. And then we're going to bill that information to the, uh, to the, the customers or the people that have the guitar lessons. In practice, we'd probably come up with a billing system, a routine maybe in advance. That might be an easier way to set it up from a practical standpoint. The reason a law firm, by the way, is set up the way a law firm is set up or a CPA firm is because we don't know how long it's going to take to do a particular job. The job is going to be complex and we're going to have the only way we have or know to build the time is to just estimate what the time will be and then and then see what happens. But with it, with something like guitar lessons, you can easily predict how long it's going to take to do something because you're going to meet an hour session so you can have like possibly a, a service that is paid in advance uh, and and you know exactly what the bill is going to be. But I want to imagine in our scenario with the guitar lessons that were similar to a job cost system that you might see in a law firm or CPA uh, type of firm to see what that process looks like. Now, note that if you're using software like a QuickBooks or a Xero, then it's possible for you to track the time possibly in the software, which you can then apply to like a particular job or a particular client. So this is an area where once again, the software can basically do a step above in some ways, the normal like double entry accounting system that we can see in our kind of two dimensional system in uh, Excel here. The, the, the database program has a little bit more capacity to not only do the double entry accounting system, but possibly the data input for the timesheets that can then be linked to create an invoice. So we'll talk about that process uh, in our Excel system here, where it's a little bit more transparent. So that, and then we can get an idea of how that would look if we were to compose that in a database program, which is not as transparent. That's the pros and cons. In an Excel system, you can kind of see what is happening because everything is laid out. In a database system, you're kind of jumping around. And if you can't visualize the links between one thing and another thing, then you're probably going to get lost, right? So let's first imagine that we have a timesheet. I'm going to go all the way to the right. And we're going to imagine that we say, okay, employees, what I want you to do, we're gonna, we're gonna pay you, we've agreed to pay you either salary or, or we've agreed to pay you uh, hourly, but I still need you to track the time of the guitar lessons that you do because that's how I build the client, right? So I need you to, to enter that information. So let's make a skinny over here. I'm gonna make a skinny, go into the home tab, format paint, make a skinny DM. And we're going to say that this is going to be, let's put it up top. Uh, let, let's put it down here. I'll say this is time sheet. And then I'll put uh, Erica. Let's put, let's put the name up here. Time sheet. And then I'll put for Erica. Erica. And then <clears throat> we're going to have uh, the rate. Let's just put this all up here. I'll say the rate is $100, we're gonna say an hour. Now the $100 an hour doesn't have anything to do with, uh, with what we pay Erica, the, our employee. That's what we're gonna bill the client. So I need them to tell me the time that we're going to have, and then I need to know what I'm gonna bill the client for. Now, quick note here, 
uh, it's possible that if Erica is working on some project like guitar lessons for a client, you can imagine it was bookkeeping or something like that, then I have a couple choices on the billable rate. I could say I'm going to charge everything Erica does at $100 because that's Erica's billable rate. And then I try to find work that suits Erica's billable weight rate for particular clients. Or I could say I, I'm going to bill based on what is done, meaning guitar lessons versus a tune up versus whatever, putting strings on the guitar and so on and so forth. So that I'm not charging based on who did the work. I'm charging based on the work that was done. Either way, I need to know the hours that I'm going to charge to a particular client. Okay, and so notice as we do the timesheet as well, you can imagine timesheets being done within a system like a QuickBooks or a Xero, possibly allowing the employee or contractor even possibly to fill out their own timesheets, which will then automatically feed into the QuickBooks system so that we can use that timesheet to one, maybe adjust the payroll if they're an hourly employee and I need to know the hours that they work, or maybe we don't need it for payroll because we're paying them salary anyways, which would possibly be the case in a law firm or CPA firm. What I need to know is the hours so that I can then turn around and invoice the clients for the time that they have worked. So either way, I need that information. Now that would be great if I can integrate that into a timesheet that automatically kind of feeds into the system from which I can construct an invoice uh, from. However, it's quite possible and many people will have an external system saying, hey, just put it in an, an Excel sheet or something like that. Just tell me your hours that you worked on a client and give it to me weekly, monthly, bi-weekly because that's my billing statement and I need that information for billing. So we might not be as technical having everything as integrated. You could just use an Excel worksheet and say, just make sure you list the client, tell me what you did, and then give me the days that you worked and the hours so that I can gather that on a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly basis or so and create my uh, invoices from that. Okay, so then we're gonna say this is gonna be the this is going to be Erica and we're going to say this is going to be the client and then we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and then the total total. All right, let's make this whole thing black and white. I'm going to select this home tab font group. I'm going to make this black and white. And then I'm going to make this one blue because that's that's going to be my data input for the rate that we're going to charge. So I'm going to make this one blue and the text will be black. And then this I'll make this black and white. Let's make this black and white. And then I'll center all of the days and whatnot. Home tab font group center. All right. Our two. Uh, these are our. our our uh, customer. So this is Erica's timesheet and she worked, she did work for Jones Guitar. So we're going to imagine she did work like guitar lessons or whatever for Jones Guitars. And she says, okay, and we have eight hours. Now, again, we might want to have Jones Guitars and what she did because I might be billing based on what she did or at least need that on the invoice. But if what she does is always the same thing, then, then all I need are the hours because I know what she did if she just does guitar lessons, right? And then Smith Guitars is the client again. So, and we're gonna say that she worked uh, eight hours over here on Smith Guitars. Now, quick thing to note here as well, when you populate a timesheet that has a weekly kind of thing like this, uh, <clears throat> we, if, if she worked like, uh, if, if she worked for multiple clients on like the same day, then of course she'd have to have another row for each client that she worked on so that we can break out in the same column, each client, uh, that she, that she worked on. And if she worked on different tasks, like she did guitar lessons versus she did uh, 
um, like like a tune up or something like that. Then again, we would need to have them on different rows, most likely, so I can assign the different task that was done to the different items so that I can at least put that on the invoice or possibly uh, possibly bill based on what she did rather than who did it. All right, but that's the basic idea. Let's make these a little bit thinner. I'm gonna make these a little thinner and then we'll just total this up. Let's sum it up on the outside. Sum it up and then we'll copy it down. And this is gonna be our total. So let's put zeros across the board too, to not confuse us. So she just worked on those two. And then we'll put an underline here, home tab, font group, underline, and then we'll sum up this way and copy that across. So we have a total of uh, the 16 hours. I'm gonna make this blue and bordered, blue and bordered. Okay, so now that we have, once this information, let's make this bordered as well. Once we have this information from the, the client, from our employee, we could get it again, just in this format. It might look something just like this, or we could be more high tech having them enter it into like uh, QuickBooks on their end, which kind of feeds into our side. And that would be great as well. Once we have it, then I can turn around and use this information to either, if they work hourly, create their timesheet, I mean, create their uh, paycheck based on the hours. But again, what I'm really looking for oftentimes here, even if I'm not using the payroll, even if they were a contractor, is to turn around and bill the client based on this information. So I'm gonna take this information and make an invoice for Jones Guitars and Smith Guitars uh, based on, on the eight hours worked for each of them and the rate of $100. So, so that's what we're gonna do. Now, if we were in a software like a QuickBooks, for example, and I used their system to enter the time into the system, then you get a little bit of added information which can be useful as long as everything is set up properly. It can also cause problems if you don't know how it works because you could have links that you don't really know what, what they're doing. But, but the idea would be that once we entered this, if we assign these items to be billable items based on Erica's rate uh, of $100, then when I look up this customer, for example, in the subledger, uh, in, in a QuickBooks, it'll show that we have unbillable time. And then we can go around, we could turn around and create an invoice from directly the timesheet in essence, which is great. So that's a, that's a great deal. However, again, it can get a little confused. We can also run reports for billable items. Billable items would be time that has been entered into the system assigned to a customer, but which we have not actually created a transaction. We haven't recorded the invoice yet. Therefore, no transaction has been recorded for that billable time. It's telling us that we need to record a transaction. We could also have a similar thing, billable expenses, which we'll talk about in the next presentation, linking together like supplies or whatever we purchased. If we think that is part of our invoicing structure, and we want to pull that into the invoice. We have to be careful with those links because when I pull this information into the invoice, uh, I have to I have to make sure that it's being applied to the proper income account, which is usually going to be dri driven by service items that I'll have to kind of set up here. So Erica's income, I'm going to put to service income. Okay, so let's go all the way to the right and say, all right, let's. Then I would use that information to make an invoice, which would create, in essence, an an invoice, a journal entry from an invoice. So this is gonna be on 130. So we'll imagine at the end of the month here, we're gonna ask our employees to give us their billable time so that we can make the invoice. They give us that timesheet. Now we have billable time for uh, guitar lessons. And for this one, I'm just gonna do Jones Guitars. We'll do the other client, other customer after Jones Guitars and it was $800. So I'm gonna get this from the timesheet. I'll just say equals, just so we can see where it comes from. We're pulling it all the way up from 
all the way to the right. I should have probably hit some cells, but Jones Guitars were pulling this information in eight uh, uh, hours times the rate of $100. So that means we're gonna be invoicing Jones Guitars $800. Let's indent this. So then we're gonna say, all right, that's now we just have an invoice. Accounts receivable is gonna go up by the 800. I'm not gonna deal with sales tax because I'm imagining in our system, sales tax is only applied to inventory items. So we'll go to the other side, which is gonna to go to service revenue. It's gonna go up by the $800. All right, and then let's put the zeros across the board. Zeros across the board. Du, 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 du. All right, so there we have that. Now we have accounts receivable, therefore we're gonna have a sub ledger that we also have to deal with. Sub ledger tracking the information owed to us by customer in Jones Guitars. Now again, in QuickBooks, for example, you might look and run a customer report or possibly go into Jones Guitars at the end of the year, look at their information in the sub ledger, which is where you would have seen the billable item which has not yet been recorded, which again gives you another little bit of added detail to tell you to record the billable item, but no actual financial transaction would have taken place. The only transaction would take place when you actually bill them or invoice them, which we are doing here. So now we're gonna say Jones Guitars is gonna go up by 800 for the invoice. I'm gonna copy down the running balance. The running balance, it needs to run a little further down running balance is running like Forrest Gump when Jenny told him to. This is going to be 13557 in the sub ledger, which should match what's in our general ledger. And that's going to be this 13557. I was just doing what you told me to, Jenny. And we're going <laughs> to... Nobody knows Forrest Gump anymore for Ryan out loud. Let's copy this down. What do you mean no one knows Forrest Gump? What are you talking about? He's famous. Let's copy this down. I'm gonna put a zero, I'm gonna put an underline under this. Home tab, font group, underline. I'm gonna put an underline here. Underline here. And We'll bring down the totals now. Equals the sum of the prior total plus the current activity. Copy that across the board for our invoice. And we'll paste it formulas only. Paste it formulas only. Paste it formulas only. And we'll copy down the balance once again copy down the balance to see if our ending balance is in balance. Accounts receivable went up, even though we haven't got the cash yet. Therefore, assets went up, our accounts receivables, and uh, the equity went up because we recorded the income when it has been earned. Now, another thing just to point out here, notice when the work was done, the work was done like a week ago or you know last week or something, right? but we didn't get around to actually billing it or invoicing it until whenever our invoicing cycle is, which, which might be weekly, might be bi-weekly, might be monthly. So notice that turns out to result in like a timing difference, right? Because really, ideally, we should be recording the revenue when the work was done, which you can imagine if I bill people monthly, then you can imagine the work was actually done in the prior month and I'm billing them in the current month, right? You see how, and that could result in a timing difference that possibly could need adjusting for at the end of the year for a proper accrual based system, even accounting software, in other words, when using an accrual system, isn't perfectly accrual, right? It's just doing its best. It's trying to, it's trying to use the form that's going to be closest to the time the actual work was done. If you're on an accrual basis, which is typically the invoice, that's all it has to go off of, unless it was going to record something based on the timesheet, 
which would be kind of unusual. You, you won't typically do that. So that so so just to keep that in mind, the the systems driven by the forms doesn't necessarily mean it's perfectly on an accrual basis or pers- perfectly on a cash basis just because you click those little buttons, right? It's trying to do the best it's can, it can based on the forms that we're doing the data input for. You still might need adjustments depending on the type of industry that we are in. But, okay, that's enough of that. That's that one.